say we love people, but then we also love our dog, and we love the leg of lamb, and we love our house, and we love a car, and we've used love very freely to mean all kinds of things. Now, how many realize if you love your wife the way you love the leg of lamb, it's just not going to work? Because if you love the lamb, he wouldn't be dead on your plate. You understand what I'm saying? So it can't be the same love. The Bible says, do not love the things of this world. Hello, my friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. We're having a look at a wonderful message that talks about the power of God's life. God has given us an eternal life. But that eternal life doesn't start one day when we get to heaven. We can enjoy the kingdom lifestyle today. That kingdom lifestyle is governed by love. Watch how this powerful law of love goes to work. And as we apply it in our lives... We can enjoy the wonderful kingdom life. Enjoy this. I'll see you later. Verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. Why? For God is love. The only way you can be wet is if you have water. Wet comes with water. God is love. When we say love, in our own human ability, in our own human mind, the natural world, if you think of people who are, do not understand God, don't know the covenant of God, we have a word, L-O-V-E, out there that we talk about. And we, we, we say we love people, but then we also love our dog. And we love the leg of lamb. And we love our house, and we love a car. And we've used love very freely to mean all kinds of things. Now, how many realize if you love your wife the way you love the leg of lamb... It's just not going to work. Because if you love the lamb, he wouldn't be dead on your plate. You understand what I'm saying? So it can't be the same love. We talk about love, but really, when you talk about, when we talk about love, L-O-V, agape, the force called love, the Bible says, do not love the things of this world. Did the Bible say that? Yes. Don't love the things. Don't love things. So I shouldn't be saying, I love my car. Because yes. love is a force. Love is a presence of God used for covenant connections with people. For covenant functions. Covenant walking. You getting this? So... What I'm really trying to express is, is an emotion where I really like my car. A lot. But it's not love. God gives us freely all things to enjoy. You can enjoy it. Amen. Come back to the leg of lamb. I really like leg of lamb. It's a pity the lamb had to die, but... I enjoy the meat. Amen. Amen. And God gave us the animals for food. Does that make sense? So, when it comes to love, true love, true love, until a person is born again, they'll never experience it. Because even the emotion we have between humans is not really love the way God designed it. It's eros love. In other words... It really is a strong attraction. 
it's driven, it's an emotion, which we, we understand that when we say love, we know what we mean by that. But when you look at the definition of love, when the word talks about love is kind, love is gentle, love doesn't seek after its own, love never fails, that whole concept of love, you can only do that by the Spirit of God. Why? Because He is love. He is love. He's the person love. So when you're born again and that love enters into your heart, it's that love that you are then understand. Everything else that I was trying to do was not really love. It was seeking after my own. Even when people say, I love you, but it's only as long as you're nice to them. Because when they're not nice anymore and you sit down, we've had it in marriage counseling where the spouse says, I don't know, I just don't love him anymore. But hang on, love never fails. So evidently what you had was not love. It was some other emotion which we've now called love. And that emotion came to an end. Is this making sense? It's important to know this because if I'm walking in love the way God loves me, God's love for you is unconditional. I want you to get that, not just as a religious amen. God loves you unconditionally. That means He loves you no matter what you've done. He loved you when you were still unlovely. When we were ugly, when we were blaspheming, when we were swearing, when we were being horrible to people, when we were doing all kinds of stupid things, God still loved us. We love Him because He first loved us, and He pursued us, and He pursued you, and He chased after you. He used every person He could to speak the gospel to you. He put every tract in your hand that He could get to you. He put every notice about His kingdom in front of you. He chased you down, He got, and eventually you woke up to the fact, hey, maybe God does love me. These people say, I found Jesus. No, he wasn't lost. You and I were the ones lost. He chased after you. How do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, you ran hard. I know for myself, I ran hard and fast for a long time. But he got a hold of me. Why? Because he loved me even when I was rejecting him. He embraced me when I was fighting to get out of his arms and I was banging and Trying to twist and turn and yank and punch and try. And he just kept holding on. Just kept holding on. Kept holding on until eventually you stop and say, okay. Come on, how do you know what I'm talking about? You get to that place where you say, I'm not running anymore. If someone loves me so much through all my blasphemy, through all my anger, and is still willing to touch my life and touch my wife's life and heal her and and do that without me even a guarantee, I'll say thank you. That's the kind of love I want to know. I don't know what the other religions were trying to shake on us, but Jesus is Love. God is love. And He loves you. I don't care how many people have hit you over the head, how many preachers from a poop would try to bash you with some kind of Bible baseball stick. God's going to get you. No, He got me with love. Just lift your hands right and say, God loves me. Say it again. Some of us need to hear it. Say it again. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. God loves you. He is love. He can't do anything else. Water's wet. Amen. Water can't be dried as much as it tries. God is love. You get God on you, you've got love on you. Verse 9, in this the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. That we might live through Him. Now notice it doesn't say that we might live for Him. We do live for Him. But yeah, it's saying we live through Him. Family, we can't live without Him. We can't live without Him. 
Imagine one day you, you come to your senses and maybe before we were saved, you know, an unsaved person comes up to the father and says, Father, I want to be born again. He says, okay, go ahead, do it. Well, what do you do? What do you do? You want to be born again? Go, go, go get born again. How do you do that? I, I don't know. I don't, yeah. come on, how do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know what, how do I, how do you rebuild a spirit? How do you recreate it? How do you, I can't do it. No one can get saved on their own. I don't know the workings of the Spirit. I don't know how to go and do it on my own. No, the only way I can get saved is through Him. He has to do the work. And so instead of me, it doesn't matter how good I am, how much I live according to the law, how much I try and do with something and try and make, fix me up, the more I do it, the worse I get. That, those righteous works and deeds are just filthy rags in the, in the, in the nostrils of God. So I can't work myself. I don't know how to fix myself. I don't know how to get myself saved. So what I do, I step over into His love and I say, I am nothing. I lay down. It doesn't matter what I do. I'll never save myself. So I just lay all my works aside. I lay all my own self-righteousness aside. I lay aside all my arrogance, all my pride, anything I try to be. Yeah, right, now, right now, I determine I'm nothing. I crucify myself. Right now, I die. I give my life to you completely. Amen. Now, Jesus, you, my Lord, you know how to save me. And you open yourself to it, and he moves in, and his Holy Spirit invades your life and completely recreates your spirit, a brand new species of being. Amen. And you're born again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you have experienced that? How many of you have already? You're living that life. Now, the same way you got born again, now are we going to live this life of the kingdom of God? I don't know how to do that. I don't know how the kingdom operates. It's totally foreign to the natural mind. But the same way now, from today on, now that I was saved through Him, I now live through Him. I live through Christ. I allow Christ to to manifest in my life. I don't know how to love unconditionally, but He does. And so I allow His presence, His anointing, His Spirit to love through me. I don't try to do it in my own ability. Because the moment I try and reason, someone does something to me, well, now they don't deserve love. Who am I to decide that? Because He loved me all the time. And so I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah, well, I don't know how to do that. I don't know if I can do that. I mean, I can, I, I. No, do it. You allow Christ to live through you. In this, verse 10, is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. In other words, Jesus settled it with the Father. I paid for all His sin. The Father said, I'm satisfied. Lift your hand and say, every sin I've ever committed or ever will commit has been totally paid for to the full satisfaction of my Father. It's good news. Verse 11, beloved or highly favored. Oh, you should have said a big amen there. How are you beloved? Say, I'm highly favored. If God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Yes. Now I know what we like. Well, I don't know if I can do that. Do you have water in you? Do you have water in you? Yes. Calling the Holy Spirit water now. Do you have water in you? Yes. So you're wet. Yes. You can splash. That's right. Isn't that right? Okay. I'm taking you somewhere. Stay with me. Verse 12, no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us, because He has given us His Spirit. We have seen 
and testify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Now listen to this. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God. Let me see. Anyone here has confessed Jesus as the Son of God? Come in our campuses, our live links, all around the world. Yeah? yeah. This is you. Amen. You're in the Bible. That's Bump your name and say, I never knew I was in the Bible so much. <laughs> there you are. You can put Alan, put your name there. Whoever confessed that Jesus is the Son of God. So I can write there, write Alan. God abides in Alan, and Alan abides in God. You say that with your name. Ready? Go. God abides in Alan, and Alan abides in God. So if wet abides in, say it with me, wet abides in Alan, Alan abides in wet. Does that make sense? If you got water on you, you're wet. Now, God is love. So, if love abides in Alan, Alan abides in love. Say it. Ready? Go. Love abides in Alan. Alan abides in love. You have the love of God in you? And you live in it. All right. We have known and believed. There's the key. We can all say amen. But we need to believe it. Amen means now I know it. But amen also means so let it be. Let it be so. I believe. I believe the love that God has for me. God is love. He who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Strap on your seatbelt. Because as he is, so we will be one day in heaven. Hallelujah. No? What does it say? As he is, so are we. Where? In this world. Now. In this world. Lift your hand and say, I'm just like my God. Why? Because he's in me. And I'm in him. And I live through him. As he is, so am I. Now, that takes us down two roads of revelation. One is, have you noticed how much God talks about faith? Yeah. It's like, he, you know, that's his favorite subject. Yeah. <laughs> Have faith in God. Yeah. Walk in faith. Faith is like. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith, 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 faith. Why is that? Because the just shall live by faith. But you notice how Jesus, when he spoke about faith, Mark chapter 11, he says, whatever you ask for when you pray, believe you receive it, you'll have it. Therefore, you can say to this mountain, be removed and cast and see and done down in your heart. It goes on about that. You'll have whatever you say. Therefore, I say, whatever you ask for when you pray, believe you receive it. The next verse, when you stand praying, Forgive. 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 That's another one of God's pet subjects. Is faith and forgive. Faith and forgive. Faith and forgive. Why? Because the just shall live by faith. But if I don't forgive, I am breaking the law of faith. I'm breaking the law of love. Because if I don't forgive, get a hold of this. The only reason I don't forgive someone 
is because I'm not allowing love to flow towards them. Love forgives. I said love forgives. Well, come on now. Ham, you done something that you probably would never forgiven yourself for, and yet God loves you. And he forgave you. Come on, Ham, you're willing to admit to that? So God looked at you. You felt dirty and pathetic and ridiculous. But God loved you enough to forgive you. Love forgives, right? So if I don't forgive someone, it shows that I haven't released love. And if I haven't released love, that means something is hurting me. Yeah? Something is hurting me. What is that? What is that? Mark chapter 4, verse 13. Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable, how will you understand all the parables? Verse 14, the sower sows the word. And verse 15, these are the ones sown on the hard ground. Remember that? Hear the word, don't accept it. Then he gets to the next group and he says, these are ones sown on the rocks. They hear the word. The word comes up. Then what happens? Tribulation and persecution comes. And immediately they are offended. King James Version. Immediately they are offended. They are? And what happens? That word's choked. It dies. Offense kills the word. Tribulation is when things go wrong. How many of you had things happen that go wrong? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Things that challenge your belief in the Word of God. Things go wrong. Why is this happening to me? Anyone ever asked that question? Well, the reason is because Satan's coming to steal the Word. That's why. So tribulations when things happen. Persecutions when people happen. Anyone ever had people happen? You know what I'm talking about. Things happen, people happen. What's the purpose? It's because he needs to choke that word. But he doesn't, there's, there's no way Satan can choke the word. For someone that believes to take the word and walk with the word and walk in faith of that word, there is no way the enemy can take the word out of someone that accepts the word, receives the word, does the word, walks in the word. You cannot steal the word. Heaven on earth. That's what Jesus said, pray. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You were not saved so that you can get to heaven one day. As a Christian, you are the carrier of God's grace and you have been chosen by God to demonstrate His love through you. You were saved to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven today. In this series, Alan Bag aims to empower you with the importance of living fully for Jesus. You are here on assignment. You will learn how walking in forgiveness will help reveal the glory of God through you as well as understand the importance of your role in the body of Christ. We are citizens of heaven deployed in the earth. So get this series and enjoy the heavenly life in God's manifested love. Contact Allen Bag Ministries at any of these details. The Word of God tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The more that I hear the Word on any subject, the more faith I have to walk in that. And so many people are battling through life and struggling with hassles and problems around them where we can experience the kingdom life today. Well, the way we experience it is, is by walking in the powerful law of love. I encourage you to get your series today. We've watched it on the program. Now, as you get it, you can plug it into your car, listen to it in wherever you're working, whatever you're doing. You can listen to the Word over and over and over and over again. And the more you do, faith will rise, and you can walk in that power law of love. If this is the first time you've been watching this program, I want to let you know God loves you. Maybe you haven't yet given your life to Jesus, but that kingdom life is available today. All we have to do is receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. The Bible says if you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and you confess with your mouth that He's Lord and Savior, you will be saved. 
So I want to lead you in that prayer today. Wherever you're watching, just say this out loud. I'll give you the prayer, but you say it out loud so that you can hear it. Say this with me. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. You gave your life for me. And then you rose from the dead. And today you are alive. I believe that. I call you my Lord. You are my Savior. And right now, I'm born again. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. If you've just prayed that prayer, I've got something that I'd like to bless you with. This is a card that will explain to you what's just happened, some guidelines now that you are a Christian. This is a Bible study that's going to help you read through your Bible in a year. And then this wonderful CD, My Christian Passport, Out of This World of Failure into His Kingdom of Victory. Now, that's my free gift to you. I want to sow that into your life. We're going to pay the postage as well. Just call us on that phone number or write to me at that address. As soon as i got your details, we'll make sure you get that. Well, that's all we have time for today. We look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church in many locations. With the help of technology and God's powerful grace at work, you can now fellowship with family at the Bay Christian Family Church at our many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to connect, join us here at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful time in both praise and worship as well as in God's life-changing Word. For any details on our many locations or to join us via live stream, visit our website or contact us at any of our details. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details. 